and out of Carol Marine in a controversial Facebook post that some are calling racist. Carol. Phil, thank you. This weekend, the Illinois Republican County Chairman's Association posted this movie-like poster on Facebook. The president of that organization took down the post saying it wasn't approved and then the chair of the Illinois Republican Party condemned it for using race or religion for political disagreement. The controversy comes after President Donald Trump's tweets telling four minority congresswomen to go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came and then come back. That earned the president a rebuke in the House that four Republicans voted for. Then there was the send her back chance at a Trump rally in North Carolina. At first, the president distanced himself from the rhetoric, but now calls the chanters incredible patriots. Here to talk about the Illinois controversy and the escalating war of charged words are Ahmed Rahab. He is the executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Chicago, and Charles Douglas Love. He is the president of the Minority Prosperity Council and author of Logic, The Truth About Blacks in the Republican Party. In his latest book, We Want Equality, How the Fight for Equality Gave Way to Preference. Welcome back, both of you, to Thanks, Chicago man. tonight. It's a pleasure. Mr. Hobb, let's begin with you and this Illinois Republican chairman's Facebook post. When you saw it, what was your sense of it? I thought it was really disturbing and problematic. It drove some of the typical anti-Muslim tropes that we have seen coming out of certain f factions of Americans, unfortunately, what we call Islamophobia, uh, where it looks at someone who is a Muslim and then it basically links them to violence, to guns, to things like that, part of the stereotype. Um, these are individuals who are against gun proliferation, that's the irony of the situation, and those who are pummeling these stereotypes are actually for uh, no control on guns, so it's a bit of an irony in the situation. Mr. Love, when you saw it, what was your sense of it? I thought it was um, inappropriate and, and, and stupid, but I don't think that, it, what's odd about it is it wasn't created by them. So I saw, I had seen it before on the internet. So it's just something that some, you know, social media dweller posted up there and somebody retweets. So people tend to, you know, in these heightened situations to start reposting stuff. So I really don't think you can connect that, uh, take that and connect it to GOP specific or whatever. And I guess this group, I'd never heard of them, but they're not connected with the, G, uh, the, the state party or something. The Republican Chairman's yeah, Association right, yeah, is. Right, right, but. Um, but at the same time, the they did say that they had many sort of ways of checking these things, but it got, yeah. somehow got through, mm -hmm. got through the net. Was it, was it racist? Well, I don't, I don't know. You're talking about particularly this just, movie just poster the, kind the, of thing, yeah. not his tweets. Um, no. I mean, it's like if I, to say this is racist, you're forcing me to play the left's game of changing the definition of words. So you talk about the definition of racist and you look at that poster and say, does it fit? Um, CNN did a uh, thing with eight women who were Trump supporters and asked him if his tweets were racist. They went back and forth, but when they all said no, the host did an interesting thing. She read the definition of racism, which said that it's a belief that race is a, a, a primary determinant in traits or characteristics. So you look at that poster or you look at Trump's tweet and say, does that say that? And by definition, it's not. We're changing definitions. Mr. Ahab, was it racist? I think it was, but I don't want to be hung up on name calling the way that they are um, approaching politics. I think we need to push away from that and look at the larger picture that we're seeing right now. This is not so much a debate for me about whether uh, the Illinois uh, Chairman's Council of the GOP here agrees with the intern that posted this up, and it wasn't a repost, it was an actual post. They uploaded the photo. My concern is whether they agree with the President of the United States, because we've seen a lot of silence from GOP leaders nationally and locally when it comes to the bullying tactics that this president has put forth, not just against members of the women, uh, Congresswomen of color that we call the squad, but against immigrants, Muslims, Latinos in general, African Americans, minorities, from the very beginning when he started off with his Mexican rapist speech, all the way through the Muslim ban, what is happening at the border, the end of human rights as we know it, as it applies to people trying to seek legal asylum in this country, so on and so forth. That's more of my concern. And furthermore, it is about how he uses very purposefully these types of um, engineered uh, controversies in order to push and pull away from the issues that matter to the rest of us, health care, education, guns on the streets. That kind of distraction is a gimmicky type of politics that all Americans, left and right, must stand up to. Mr. Love, your view on that? I think that his response was awesome. 
because it's, it's perfect in the sense that um, he brought in everything to the pack of everything that Trump had said and done, and he said it was an engineered thing. So if that's the case, I don't know what's in Trump's mind, because I hear a lot of Trump supporters saying that it was genius, and I don't know, I don't give him that much credit to say, yes, he can pull strings, but he's kind of lending to that argument, saying that it was engineered, but what the left is doing is buying into, taking the bait, and they're letting him reel them in, in a sense. Um, to say it's racist and bringing the African Americans and the elevator, and escalator and all this other stuff, it's just overwrought. And those kind of overwrought responses is actually going to help Trump because it's going to make those people who don't particularly like him, who are in the middle, realize that the left is going too far. So they say, I don't like either side. Who do I have to push back against the most? And they're going to say the left. The problem with stopping at it's engineered and saying, therefore, it doesn't matter or we can just move on, is it. that there are consequences to a president. This is a president of the United States. This isn't some inconsequential crazy uncle that we have over Thanksgiving, you know, blabbering stuff that doesn't matter to anyone. This is someone whose words are read and heard by millions of people around the world and in the United States, some of whom can actually carry out uh, some of the sentiments into actionable uh, threats against minorities. I mean, I believe there's a target on the back of each of the members of the squad and others who are targeted by this president. Um, there have been, to my knowledge, organizations that have invited them to give speeches that have had to hire $10,000 worth of extra security just for a young woman who's a freshman congresswoman to give a speech to her fellow Americans. It's because of these bully tactics. Mr. Law? I would say, isn't that, uh, is that any different than what's going on? That's kind of more of a shift than what's happening today, period. It's not a, it's not a Trump-led thing because that's new for them, but that's been conservatives for the last two years. You know, look at Milo, look at Ben Shapiro, look at Dennis Prager and all of them being attacked, being denounced at, at schools, fires and, and attacks and, and, and all that kind of stuff, and the Antifa attacks. That's happening to conservatives, and it's happened far more to conservatives than liberals. So when to say that that's time? Trump, when was the last time? When was the last and, time know? the president of the United States oh, we, went after members of Congress to say that they should go back where they came from? I challenge you to tell me when was the last time that any of us can remember, going back to Andrew Johnson, Okay, but at least in the television era or in the social media era, where a president of the United States would engage in these schoolyard juvenile tactics Mr. Love, to otherwise as, Americans. As a Republican, is does that raise it to a different level when the Republican in question making these statements is the president? You no, know, I, I think. I mean, obviously it does. I never said that I agree with the tweet, and the tweet wasn't super. It's the, the question is is the difference between the, what they're saying is they're asking you, is it racist? Answer. And, you know, a lot of this stuff isn't that simple. For instance, it would be like saying, you know, all the ugly people do this, and then somebody stands up and says, you know, why do I have to leave? All the ugly people leave. Why do I have to leave? Well, in that situation, you call yourself ugly. You know, is it inappropriate? Is it wrong? Yes. But is it racist because it didn't attack the race? The problem with it being Republican, more than the president, obviously the president has a certain uh, way that we expect him to uh, carry himself, but he's been doing this for two years. Are we going to jump every time he does it? But beyond that, the, the only difference between him and the left, because the left does it all the time, from celebrities to academics to all across the board, and they have followers. They have 50 million Twitter followers. The only difference is that the Republicans have uh, uh, a belief amongst people. A lot of people just have this stereotype that Republicans believe a certain way, and so it hurts them more. So a Democrat can do the same thing, because but people don't go around with a built-in belief that they're racist, so they get away with it. If I said 10% of what this president is saying in terms of the racist language he's using, I would be disinvited from this program. I couldn't say the things that he's saying on this program. If I was an employer, I'd be investigated by the EEOC. Okay. We cannot hold our president to lesser standards that we hold the rest of Americans. We have to hold him to the same standards and not higher standards. Well, the EEOC, as you bring it up, has a rule that says ethnic slurs and other verbal or physical conduct because of nationality are illegal. Potentially unlawful conduct includes insults, taunting, comments like, go back to where you came from. That's a federal agency rule of a government that mm -hmm. the president heads. Is, is the rule not applicable to him? Well, it's, 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 no, I'm not saying it's not applicable to him, but I, the, three, the things about that is, one, it's the same as that shift I keep talking about, about what's racist. We're calling everything's racist. So now talking about people, making fun of people is racist is what, is what it's saying, for one thing. And just because... No, all, it's uh, saying because of nationality. But, okay, and then that's, I'm going to lead to that. So what nationality were these, these four, supposed four, four congresswomen? He didn't, because he didn't say any names. And, and so, again, like I said about the ugly comment, so he didn't say any names, but we all say he said it about 
about this person. So, you know, that, that's one. But what national, you were going to tell me what national. Somali, yeah. Palestinian, uh, Puerto Rican, which happens to be part of America, ironically, and the president p perhaps doesn't know that. Geography is not his best yeah, thing. Sure he but he, but here's that. what's interesting. See, when we talk about, okay, he's coming after them not because of where they were born or their religious background, it's because of their socialist beliefs. Let's run with that for a second. Who is identified with, with socialism? Very quickly, who's associated with socialism more than anyone in this country? Bernie Sanders. When was the last time Trump told him to go back where he came from? He only looks at women of color, people of color, as being second rate citizens, people as not the long racist. And that's racist because it was created by people, people who are racist. Yeah. We, Saying people of color, I, I mean, most blacks don't like the African American label, but people of color, you might as well just call me colored. I mean, what is a person of color? It makes absolutely no sense. It's like everybody's deferring, as the great Shelby Steele said to me the other day, is that we all deferring. You know, why well, just say, well, if, you, if it's going to hurt somebody's feelings, just defer. It doesn't matter whether it makes sense or not. Let's just defer. It's about treating what is people, people What is people of color? People, what is people look, of color? I think, I think Semantics we're not doesn't matter. <laughs> treat people semantics. equally is what matters. And I, this think we're not going to resolve, I think we're not going to resolve this <laughs> no, in, the, in, in the seconds that remain. But we do thank you. Ahmed Rahab and Charles Douglas Love, thanks for being here. Thanks, Pleasure. Andrew. More on Chicago tonight. Stay with us.